What if you had an app where you could report cases of bribery or hate speech? What if you could access legal advice on your phone? I'm speaking with Dr. Rohini Srihari, who is a professor of computer science and engineering at the University of Buffalo. Rohini, what are some technologies that have been designed that essentially assist the rule of law? You already mentioned apps that talk about, you know, reporting bribes and reporting hate speech, but there are other kinds of apps, for example, that help uh, women find a safe route on their way home from work. So simple things like that can make a direct impact to someone's daily life. But then there are more, you know, sophisticated apps. So for example, AI uh, based apps that are being used, for example, for convicted criminals to decide what the sentence should be. And then you have um, apps which use very complex kind of imagery, satellite imagery or facial recognition, for example. Example. And an amazing one is one that uses facial recognition technology to help find missing children. Using artificial intelligence, machine learning, and facial recognition technology, it is now possible to scan millions of images from around the globe, helping law enforcement to find missing children. I think it's really the, the need for solutions that drive innovation. And so, for example, uh, we've seen uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, very sophisticated mapping uh, apps uh, being developed in the continent of Africa, you know, India, for example, lots and lots of mobile apps. Actually, there's a fantastic organization training people all over India basically to use iPad to document you know things of concern in their community. Are there any potential pitfalls if these apps or technologies fall in the wrong hands can they be abused and misused? If you do look at pros and cons I think the pros still uh, outweigh the cons but but there's definitely potential for misuse of these and potential harm also. So for example, mobile app, if you're reporting a bribe or something and you're in an authoritarian type of regime, you could be attacked for that. So this is where the people developing the technology could help out and have apps that just disappear from your phone, for example, and leave no trace. You know, even the AI based system that decides on sentences for criminals, for example, those uh, algorithms are biased because of the biased data that's being fed into them. And they tend to give much lengthier sentences for you know, people of color, for example, just because the, it reflects a data bias. What are the ways that we can assess the ethical impact and the intended impact of these, of these applications and technologies? So when you develop a solution, you should be thinking, well, how am I going to judge whether this is really effective or not? You don't just release an app and say, you know, that's it. You have to constantly be monitoring and seeing how it's being used. And there's some technology ways to do that, but the, but the ethics um, oversight um, is extremely important. Advances in machine learning and artificial intelligence can have a positive impact on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. The AI for Social Good movement aims to create partnerships towards this end. This is the area that I'm researching in right now, AI for social good. In my case, it's, it's you know, more uh, high technology being used for social good. And in, in that realm, uh, there's just so much opportunity for people to get involved. Uh, we're using this to even recruit women in STEM technologies, help us design apps that can help you and your communities. So it's just an area that's, that's taking off and which is wonderful. You know, it's uh, drawing a much more diverse cohort of people interested in developing these kinds of apps. So that's, you know, on the high tech end, but I would also emphasize that there are also some use of very low tech that should not be ignored. So a simple SMS based app where, you know, women can text something and get help, you know, uh, those kinds of technology should not be ignored. So I think the message is that, you know, technology has to adapt 
to the situation where the users, intended users are. If there's no internet connection, you know, you have to, what's the point in designing something that involves satellite imagery monitoring? So I think that's a very important consideration. Technologies hold an exciting potential to support justice and the rule of law. What becomes important is that those designing technologies, those using them and those evaluating them, have high ethical standards. Thank you for watching.